All right. Welcome, everyone. It's our Tuesday night team call, and Marilyn Mosier here from Northwest Iowa. Just really excited to have a special guest on tonight. And about, was it two months ago, we're back in March, that Stephanie and I were on a Zoom together. We had never presented together. We uh, did the Zoom call together, and we had so much fun. And getting to know her, I was like, oh my gosh, how come I didn't know you? You've been in the company what is it, four years now in Life Vantage? Or? Four years in May, yeah. And I've been in almost 10. So, But Stephanie Kroon is married to Corey and has is a mother of three boys that are very, keep her very, very busy. And she has a degree in exercise science and nutrition. She was recruited several years after college into the pharmaceutical industry. And then she spent 15 years working in that career, managing a territory in Illinois and then in Arizona. In 2010, the company she worked for downsized. And um, so she found herself wondering what to do. So she went back to school for holistic nutrition and began working alongside conventional doctors. Then soon after for a holistic practice where she was in, introduced to Life Vantage in Arizona. There she's working, I think, with Dr. Brett Brimhall, that group. And her personal story of her son's radical improvement and changes after being introduced to this product set her heart on fire for Life Vantage and for network marketing. So welcome to our call, Stephanie. You're just so much fun. Uh, to work with and just I so admire your you're so well versed in everything as far as from nutrition and all the different products but then also you know you just have um, a great entrepreneurial spirit which I admire in you so I'm going to just turn the call over to you and let you share uh, a little bit about your story and then of course you know the products and then how they affected your little guy and and give us you know give us the full story so I'm going to turn it to you thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, no problem. Well, thank you for asking me. I'm very honored to be a part of your team call tonight. It's really awesome. Um, so yeah, exactly like Marilyn said, I spent 15 years in the pharmaceutical sales industry, um, specifically digestive disease. That was, um, that's where God placed me. And I'm really so grateful for my time that I spent there because it educated me on the gut microbiome. It educated me on how doctors see it and how they treat, which is symptoms. Um, and when I was able to come over to the bright light of the holistic healing side, I was able to really see um, what we were doing and what, um, what the doctors were doing. And it's not, not at anyone's fault. It's just they don't know. But it's not the best way. Um, I think that pharmaceuticals have a space in this world, absolutely, especially for acute care. Um, but when we're looking at some of the chronic diseases and chronic illnesses that we're using uh, medications for, there is another way. And when I um, realized that other way, it really did start to ignite me. So when um, layoffs came and I found myself home, it was really an opportunity for me to evaluate where I wanted to go and where I wanted to be in life. And I didn't feel like I was living my purpose and living my dream anymore um, when I saw that the healing power of nutrition. Um, and so that's when I went back to school and, and got some additional education and, and then most recently received a certification as a um, functional um, diagnostic nutrition practitioner. And that's really opened up my eyes too, because now I have my hands on all kinds of testing and that's super fun too. And um, now I really started to niche myself with ADHD and autism as well as gut healing, but really it's the ADHD and autism. So currently I help... Um, support a couple of naturopathic doctors and I support the parents in lifestyle modifications um, and of course diet and then with my own practice and helping to support parents as well but the reason why I'm so passionate about ADHD and um, autism was because my son um, came home in the same year that I was laid off and so I, I'm the mom of three boys my youngest is um, adopted from foster care and I was already into natural medicine um, with my other two. And so we dove right in. Why would I do anything different, right? And so my youngest, um, we didn't know all of the things that he had going on. Um, he would just know he was very dysregulated. He was six months old when he came. So there was a lot we did not know. Um, he just honestly, you guys, he screamed all day and night. Like, if you can imagine like a, a you know, like, the screams that happen and you go and you pick up a baby and they stop, it didn't stop <laughs> like ever. 
<laughs> like we would, I held him all day. Like he was right here all the time. in one of those like baby Bjorn things, um, just so we could, and I, and I walked around with earplugs in because I wasn't able to get him to stop screaming and people would come in our home and they would say, he's, we don't know what to do. Like our, our, um, all the tricks and the tools that we have that we use that we don't have them, like they're not working. And so we really felt very helpless. Honestly. Um, I felt like I didn't know what our next step was and we were doing naturopathic medicine. We were doing some other holistic therapies and probably spending like five, $600 a month on, um, supplements. So fast forward, moving forward, um, we gluten-free dairy-free, um, you know, allergy testing and uh, gut microbiome testing. And we were doing a lot of individual things. And then um, he still struggled. And then we ended up at Phoenix Children's Hospital and getting our diagnoses, um, which actually was fetal alcohol syndrome. So he does have in utero exposure, but he doesn't have the look of it. And that's really what everybody was always looking for, but he fit all, fit all the other criteria. And honestly, when that diagnosis came, I was like, Oh, thank you, God. Now I know that it's not all in my head. Like, this is crazy. The problem is, is that there was nothing that we could do with that. Um, it was literally like, okay, diagnoses, but figure it out. And I remember getting a binder. I literally still have it up here, this big of a binder spiral neat, spiraled. And I just went straight to the back of it. Like, okay, I know I can read about the disease or the illness later, but I'm going to go straight to the back. Like now, what do I do? What do I do? And I literally looked down and I was like, did it, did it, did it, doing it, doing it, doing it, done it, done it, done it. Like there was nothing for me. So that was at about the age of four. So fast forward, he goes into school. He's completely unsuccessful in kindergarten. And the conversation happens of he can't sit in his, in his chair. He's hurting other kids. He's super aggressive. He's impulsive. He's, he's probably gonna have to do kindergarten again. Have you ever considered medication? And I was like, no, why would we do such a thing? Right? Like we do natural medicine and they're like, well, then if that's the, what you're going to continue doing, then he will be repeating kindergarten and we can't see him moving forward. And you just see this unsuccessfulness that's happening every day for him, like low self-esteem, low confidence, always in trouble. Like that's just a bad place to be. Um, and so we did it. So we did the medication. So he ended up being on Concerta, which is a stimulant during the day, a methylphenidate in the afternoon, just to be able to get him through that afternoon window before bedtime. Guampazine, which is a super heavy hitter, if any of you are familiar with that, um, just to be able to bring him down off of the medications. And so he would be able to go to sleep at night. And it also helps with aggressiveness and impulsivity. And he was also on Zoloft for anxiety, because if you have to live that life all the time, <laughs> It doesn't feel good inside. He was always, I was getting calls from the nurse all the time. His stomach hurts, his stomach hurts, his stomach hurts. And so when I took him to the doctor and said, okay, his stomach hurts, I think it's allergies. We need to run allergy testing. And they're like, it's anxiety. He was trying to escape, right? The environment that he was in. So that was the life that we lived for a couple of years, um, which, you know, Carrie Dickey always says, tell me where it was and then tell me where it's at now, right? <laughs> So you guys, um, even on medication, it was explosions, um, massive tantrums that you can't even imagine when you're coming off of a stimulant, your reality is one way. And now you have to deal with it another way. Cause that's what it's like when you make a shift, a stimulant, it helps calm everything down, but it also allows your, what you see around you looks really different than when the stimulant's no longer working and what the world looks like around you. And he couldn't deal. He was so dysregulated. He was emotionally unstable. He was not sleeping at night, even though he was on a med for that. He was having nightmares and tantrums and waking up just screaming in the middle of the night. And we felt like, oh gosh, it's all coming back. And that was for about two years. And then um, I, I had decided to go back to work once he was in school. And I was working for a place that I was affiliated with Dr. Brimhall as well. And I had gone in to, <laughs> to work one day and one of the doctors that I work for, who is a life vantage distributor, and I didn't really know much about um, the products. I had, I had learned a little bit about her tandem, but I wasn't thinking my son. I was just, we used it for our patients to lower inflammation because at our practice, um, they were injecting stem cells into patients. And so you want to lower systemic inflammation, right? So I was helping them with nutrition plan and supplements to lower systemic inflammation so that when the stem cells are injected, they stay where they're supposed to be and they don't 
wander and go where all the other inflammation is at. And so I get to work. And it's one of those mornings that you run in and you're like, I just need to close my door because I literally need to break down and cry. And instead I walked in and there is the doctor sitting there and I was like, no, 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 not today. <laughs> like I can't take it. <laughs> and I just broke down anyway. And I shared like, this is, this is what my mornings are like. This is, this is what my life feels like. This is what it is. And he said, you've got your kid on protandum, right? And I was like, no, I don't know. How is I going to help him? I don't understand. Oh, and by the way, I was an Axio junkie. I was drinking them every day because they were always available at our office, but I wasn't again, thinking my son. And here's something that I want to tell all of you um, that if you're ever talking to a mom or a parent of a child that's on the spectrum, ADHD, I say the same thing too. That parent is living in chaos every day of their life. So even if you go and you want to talk to them about, they can't hear you. They really can't because the emotions that it, it, the, the, the emotional toll that it takes on a, a parent is so energetically high that if you come to talk to them, they'll probably just attack you. <laughs> like if somebody would have called me and said, Hey, I've got something for you. I'd have been like, oh yeah, whatever. I'm sure you probably do. Like literally it probably would have been my response because I was living at such a high level of, of chaos really. But the fact that I was heard and someone listened to my story and heard me and said, I have somebody that's going to call you. And I was like, okay. And, but because I was heard, I was more open to the conversation. And so that's when Dr. Brimhall made a phone call to me and said, Hey, I heard a little bit about your story and we happen to be having a meeting. I was like a meeting. I can't leave my house at night. Are you kidding me? But actually that night I actually had dinner ready. My husband got home early from work, which did never happen. And it, all the pieces kind of lined up. And I was like, I'm going to go to this meeting thing and hear about these products. Are you cool with that? And he's like, sure, go ahead. And at that meeting is where um, I met Carrie Williams and I heard her story. And I remember kind of bolting out of the meeting. But I remember in the car thinking, could this help my kid really? Like this really could help him. Like I'm hearing her story and really this could like be something. And she called me the next day, even though I didn't formally meet her. This is the boldness of her, right? She called me the next day and she said, I didn't get to meet you, but I heard your story. Where are you at right now? I was like, who does that? <laughs> and I said, I'm actually at JC Penny <laughs> buying a tie for my um, middle who was graduating fifth grade, who's now a freshman in high school. And she said, great, I'm two miles away. I'll see you in a minute, right? That's our Carrie Williams though, right? And so I meet her in the parking lot, which literally I spent 15 years of my life at the trunk of my car in a parking lot <laughs> doing pharmaceutical sales. So I was like, right on. Things like this go down in parking lots all the time. <laughs> So, um, she literally said to me, um, this, I believe in this and I believe it can help you. And will you trust me? And I said, I will. Yeah, I, I will trust you. And I probably shouldn't say this out loud and it's recorded, but I'm going to, and she handed me product and she said, start your son right away. And I said, okay, I'm holding on to every word you're saying. And that was on a Thursday night. And I started him right away. Now he was already on a probiotic and Omega. So people always say, what did you start him on? I started him on Nerf one and Nerf two and Axial. And that was on a Thursday. And by Sunday, I was group texting. Nobody followed up with me, right? They were totally giving me space, which I so much appreciated that. But by Sunday afternoon, I sent a text message to Carrie and Brett and said, what is this? Because I couldn't find my son today. Okay, remember the chaos I told you I lived in? I couldn't find, I could, I was like, why is it quiet in my house? Like that means either he's left because we used to talk about wanting, well, we still do talk about this, wanting to, um, what is that? What, chip him, <laughs> put a chip in him. <laughs> Cause sometimes we're like, where are you? We can't find you. Cause he's a, he's a fleer. Um, and I was like, this is really weird. This, this must be trouble, right? We can't find him. And he was sitting in a chair calmly with a book. I was like, what is happening? Then the second thing that happened was we're on our way to church. My husband was already there. And I said to my son, I have some things on target on hold. And my son said, you can't do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And he's, but we don't go in public with my youngest. We don't go in public um, because the tantrums were so excessive. 
And he's like, you can't mom. And I was like, I think he's going to be good today. He was sitting in a chair with a book. Let's go ahead and try it. And so we did, we walked into target and as we're walking into target, he held my hand, which was unheard of, right? He didn't, he doesn't like touch. He didn't like touch. He, now, now you can't get, a, you're, you're like, okay, you got to ask first. Like that's a boundary. Cause he's always touching and hugging and wrapping himself around you. So, and then, and then the last thing that happened that day is that all by himself, he told me that he loved me. <sighs> That doesn't happen. That wasn't happening in our life. So what I saw you guys and what I want to share with you was um, a connection happened for this little boy that we had been trying to get unlocked inside of him for a really long time. So what we saw was like my thoughts that I'm having, I can actually verbalize and tell you the control that I didn't have in my body. And I was falling on the ground and running into walls all the time because my brain wanted input. And that was the only way I could do it that was happening too. So that was really, really powerful, right? For me. And all of a sudden I had this belief, like this product is actually going to do something for us. And then that's when I met up with Carrie and I met her on a Wednesday. It was a uh, Memorial day weekend actually. And I was like, I'm in, let's do this. <laughs> Look at my son. This is changing his life. Sign me up. <laughs> I want to be a part of this. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, I just have chills. Just yeah. It's just so, yeah, it was really cool. And so just so you guys know where we are now, um, within about six months, um, we brought him off of guampazine, which was really important for me because it is such a heavy hitter. And that was not, um, that was completely by accident. That was by accident. Like usually my husband and I would say, did you give it to him? No. Did you give it to him? No, no, no. Make sure you give it to him. Right. Because we knew that it, it was a game changer for us. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks went by and we're like, I haven't been giving it. Have you been giving it? Oh my gosh, we haven't been giving it. And he's okay. So we just went with it. And then the next thing um, was the Zoloft. We, we worked with the psychiatrist to bring him off, um, titrate down, him down off of Zoloft. And then the next thing that we did was the afternoon methylphenidate became Axio. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that was able to come in and fill the gap. And then NAD came out. And when NAD came out, eventually a couple months into it, the last um, stimulant came off. Wow. So he's been, when did Axi or when did NAD has been a year and a half now? 19, was it? Fall of 2018, I believe. Yeah, October. Uh huh. I remember it was fall break. We went ahead and, and said, well, we're not in school. Let's try it here at home first and see how it goes because he was the kiddo that we would even medicate even though we weren't at school because it was hard to handle at home too, but we were still way better. So here it is, it's been, yeah, since NAD came out. So that was October in uh, California. Wow. And when I got back from that, I was like, let's give it a trial. And so we did. And so he's been med free since then. Oh, wow. That yeah. is amazing. Oh, what a, cool. gift. what a gift. And then wow. we're so afraid to tell people, but it's like, just think if somebody would have not been bold enough, like Carrie to say, I've yeah. got to try this, you know, I mean, yeah. And I do want to say too, is that it, obviously it matters on who you're talking to because I had times when I wasn't open, but at the same time, I was also scouring the internet, reading and looking for things that could possibly help him. So it has to be the right person at the right time. And so don't give up on sharing, um, just believe in the, in what you have. And I have to say that to myself too, right? Because I share with a lot of ADHD parents and I'm in, I'm in groups that people are like anything natural. And then a lot of times you have conversations and they might not go anywhere. And I just have to say, no, not yet right now. They're just not ready right now or yet, just not yet. That's awesome. Well, did you want to share some of those slides or is that too much? Uh, time? Yeah, it might be too much, but just, uh, you know, it, it's education for you guys. I can share with you the, um, the I'll recording the I did. I'll make you the co-host and then you can share screen. Oh, okay. So if you want to share screen, you can go ahead and do that. And that way we'll have, I would like to see what you have. I think that would be educational actually. I don't know. Um, I made these in Canva, which um, I don't know if I know how to make it big. Wait, present. Present. Can you see that? Yep. Oh, I wish I would have done this last week when I was actually presenting because <laughs> it still had the bar way above it. So, 
last week I, I did, I, I shared our story. And then um, just to share with you, this is what I really, and this is, you know what, this is like one of the first things first that we need to do really for everyone, but really our kiddos on the spectrum and, and with ADHD, I, I really lump that whole um, atypical neural diagnoses all together. Just so you guys know, when I say spectrum, I, I, I include ADHD and um, in, in with that as well. But just, I really educate on the importance of getting the chemicals out. Um, typically these kids have a, um, a delayed ability in detoxification. We know that's why NRF2 works so well, right? Because it activates that detoxification pathway. Well, these kids are lacking in that detoxification. So these chemicals actually increase hyperactivity, sleep challenges, irritability, aggression, impulsivity, and inattentiveness. Now it does it in everyone really, but, but again, most kids can detoxify that. And so it's not healthy for anyone, but that's why we see this heightened level with when kiddos um, on the spectrum have some of these foods like the dyes, right? Um, and red dye specifically. So I really come to parents and I help walk them through. We've got to consume whole foods and parents are always like, I can't do it because my kid only eats this. Well, your kid only eats that because that's what you choose to buy. That's a hard conversation to have, right? You're the gatekeeper though, as the parent, grandparent, your home, you are the gatekeeper. You're going to the grocery store. You're allowing that food to come into your home. So that can be a tough conversation to have, but we, I have it out of love. Like, listen, you're, you're hiring me or I'm here to support you because this is what you're, what you want. So we need to know that if they're not eating a whole foods diet, they're missing out on nutrients that help their cells be healthy, right? Um, the next thing is that I always eliminate specific foods like gluten, dairy, and soy. Um, and so gluten, people are like, oh, gluten-free, like that's just a given. I have to do that. Well, you, they have to do it because it is an inflammatory product that most, that most kids, um, they really do have that negative neurological effect um, in their brain. So in, in these foods have what's called a morphine type effect. So there's dopamine receptors in the brain. So when this food, it comes into the body and it's consumed, it's like a hit. It's a reward for them. And so when they keep continuing to have those foods, they are not going to eat the other foods because they're used to that reward. So we do have to allow a period of time for this to, to for the foods to be removed so that they can become less dependent on that dopamine reward, if that makes sense. Um, but when that happens and we're no longer getting that reward, the kids aren't getting their reward, you have an increase in cognitive ability and connection and learning difficulties and, and anxiety gets better for them. And it fairly quickly too, that's the cool part about this. Um, so I had talked uh, about food sensitivities last week and about how it's very common with autism and ADHD for kids to have food sensitivities. Most of that coming because there's a gut dysbiosis. So the mucosal barrier and lining of the stomach has an injury to it. When an injury occurs to the mucosal barrier, there's like little pockets, um, little like the villi they lay down. And so now larger particles of foods can escape outside of that mucosal lining and it wreaks havoc and causes an inflammatory response in the body. And we know what's happening in the gut is also happening in the brain. And those neurotransmitters are not properly being formed to make it to the brain to say, hey, you're okay. Or, um, you know, you can relax the serotonin that helps them relax and helps them sleep. It's the happy juice. All of that is affected and it really does have a cascade effect. So I do test for food sensitivities as well on a lot of these kiddos because I call them the hidden stressor. It's a stress that the body is under and we don't know it unless we test it and find out. So that was kind of one of those, um, you know, one of the tests that I ran on my son as well to find out, you know, maybe there's something there that we don't know. These are all, I call this tools in the toolbox, okay? So we know when we go to, the, well, I don't fix a car, but if you were taking your car somewhere, they have a whole entire toolbox to work on the entire car, right? It's the same thing with our bodies and especially these kiddos on the spectrum. We need a variety of tools to come in and help them um, to, for their bodies to heal. And so picky eaters, 80% of them are on the spectrum. So a lot of times, 80% um, of the kids on the spectrum are picky eaters. So a lot of times people will be like, parents will say, my kid will never eat that. My kid will never eat that. It's not true. It's not true. When we eliminate those reward foods that are hitting the brain, 
you'll see a huge difference in the kids' palate. And we get really creative as parents too. Well, I, as their nutritionist, will help them get creative <laughs> with some foods. Like I have a little boy that literally when the parents started, he was only eating four foods. And now he's eating like black bean muffins. He thinks they're like chocolate cake, but they're made with black beans. And so he's getting a great source of fiber, just fun, creative things like that. If you're open to it, we need to get these nutrients in these kids. So a lot of times people will say, okay, so what else did you do? Right? Well, tools in my toolbox. I am going to activate the body, right? With our products. When that activation happens and that cellular cleanup happens and the cells are more healthy, guess what? that good nutrition that we're now giving the kids, they can absorb it. When, they're, when we're getting in and we're healing that gut microbiome, then the, the food can actually stay where it's intended to be. Then absorption happens and the kids are getting the nutrients that they need and their body is so lacking in. Um, I also started my son with methylated B vitamins. Methylation is also an issue most, for most of the kiddos on the spectrum as well. So, um, you know, and there's a couple other things that we've done too in regards to um, supplements, but I will tell you hands down, we didn't get the effects that we got in our kiddo until we started doing NERC 1 and NERC 2 and Axio. That was such a game changer in our life. So um, I, in closing, this is my last slide that I gave, is that we do need to have a multidisciplinary approach to autism. Please don't ever think that when you're having a conversation with a parent um, that you have the magic bullet, okay? Because it, it, it's hard for them to take that in because they've searched, most likely most of us have done a lot of searching and we've also gone to a lot of practitioners that have made promises to us. So please don't make promises, just tell stories. Hey, listen, I heard another mom speak and this is what worked for her. Would you be open to trying it too? Don't make any promises of anything. You're just telling people's stories or connecting um, other parents maybe to a webinar that I've done or feel free to put them in a chat with me or I've even done um, third-party validated um, phone calls before. Just you want to connect them to somebody who's had the experience that they're hoping that they'll have too, but we're not going to make any promises about that because listen, our, all everybody's got a different biochemistry. We know Science, we know the science of our products and we know that they work. I don't know on your side how consistent you're going to be. I don't, you know, I don't know all of those things. I was incredibly consistent and still am. I do not miss a day of any of these products for my son ever. And, um, but again, we can't promise that the results will be the same. So, any questions? Oh, this is excellent information. I'm just thinking of so many people that I wish were listening to this right now, but does anyone have a quick question? We'd love to give you back your evening if you need to jump off. Yeah. Okay. okay. What, what dosage for younger children? I went, I went all in. I was 100% okay. full NRF2 and the two NRF1. I will say this. I do believe that because of everything we have been doing for so many years, my son's detoxification pathways were good to go. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he was able to take on all of these products because of all the work that we've done as well. Um, you know, we, he didn't have any side effects at all, but I have multiple other clients that didn't either. So what age was he when you started? Six. Okay. Denise Reck was talking the other day about a little boy. He was two. And within three days of taking, and then she didn't tell us the dosage, but of taking Axio and NRF2, I don't know what else she said she gave, they gave, but within three days, he was laughing mm -hmm. and he was meeting them at the door. He was connecting and he hadn't done that before. Yeah. He'd be kind of smiling to himself or something, but it wasn't anything like laughing with them interacting. So, um, yeah. He uh, is 30 pounds and he was on half dose of Protandum, uh, Nerf 1 and Nerf 2. Uh, then he actually, and this is what happened, and this is my question, he actually got kind of overstimulated and he was just really, um, as she put it, getting crazy that, that, that she couldn't calm him down. Mm. Um, so she stopped him for a while and is going to restart and we were talking about do going one third or one fourth of the dose 
at 30 pounds. Uh, and of course he's extremely picky. And so he doesn't like any of the flavors of the Axio anymore. Yep. And so we were talking about diluting that and putting it with more juices that he might like and trying to mask the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, what would you start a 30 pound kid on? You know, mom is open, really yeah. excited. I mean, this child had never giggled or laughed mm -hmm. in his two years and had been through all the therapy that the doctor recommended and they really plateaued and he hates the therapy. He cries when they drive up in the parking lot. Yeah. And he doesn't like it at two. Yes. Oh, and, yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. And so, so, um, and he was, they were shocked. He started giggling and laughing and going to people he'd never gone to before after three yeah. days. That's so awesome. I get that. I, I had shoes thrown at the back of my head when we went <laughs> go into to, uh, the therapies. My son hated them and still does. He says to me, even still now, why do you do this to me? Cause it goes to equine therapy and he he's right now he's at vision therapy. I hate this. Why do you do this to me? I'm like, okay. Um, and how old is he? He's 11. Okay. Yeah. So, um, maybe he was seven when we started products, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah. He was seven. Um, I think it had just turned seven. Yep. He had turned seven in April and we started in May. Yeah. I think that's how it went. I don't know. It's kind of a blur. Um, I, I, so did you say he was on Nerf 2 and two of the NRF ones? And he was, he was getting- on, He was on Nerf 1, Nerf 2, and the Axio. And we were doing half dose of all of it per Carrie. Carrie said that's where she thought she we should start. Yeah. And, um, and then that just seemed to, like she said, he just got really crazy. And yep. so she wanted to calm him down a little, you know, not, not be quite so much. Um, so we were thinking about going down half again. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he's on a probiotic and I'm not sure how she would get our probiotic in him. Yeah, that is a really good point. So a couple things I want to say about that. I'd actually, my first thing I would do would be to hold off on Nerf one. Okay. Cause that mitochondria could be stimulating, right? Okay. Which is energy production, it's energy producing and maybe more of the, um, oxidative stress needs to come down. Okay. And so you could hold off on that. Um, Dr. Oops. Brimhall, I did not know this. Dr. Brimhall said that we can crush the probiotic. Wow. Yeah. For, but for children, they got a shorter way to go. I don't know. Yeah. For, so like with, um, Nerf too, you know, um, like putting in a coffee grinder or something and putting in applesauce is successful. I have a, um, I have a, a, a client that started her son with cerebral palsy. This is a really great story. You guys on just NRF2 and Axio and he, he has the rigidity of CP. So when he goes to bed at night, he, he falls asleep like this. And when she goes in to talk him in at night, he's always like this. And after one week on NRF2 and Axio one night, his hand was like this. It opened up. Wow. And so now he's sleeping with one hand open every night. So then, um, and she just ordered NRF1, added NRF1 to her auto ship. And then um, the Axio. So he loves it and he asked for it, but he didn't like it in the beginning. And um, he was at OT at school and the OT was doing an evaluation and said, I know and he, he has walkers. And she said, I have to do this just so he can like fail it. And she said, okay, Lucas, jump. And he jumped and he was surprised and she was surprised and everybody was like screaming because they'd never jumped before. He heard it and his body did it. Wow. And so he said, call mom. It gives me goosebumps, call mom, call mom. He's super excited. So I just got, I actually will tell you um, because it just came through last week and she said, um, I was teaching some classes and she came and she said, I'm writing to say thank you so much for introducing me to Pro Tandem and managing all those meetings because I connected her with a lot of people. She was very skeptical. Um, that helped us to make our decision. My son Lucas is doing so very well and thank you so much for caring about us. May God bless you. Oh, that's amazing. How amazing. I wonder, yeah, maybe Denise, you should have um, just do a, a phone call. Um, if you're open to that, Stephanie, just for some recommendations, I think that like a three-way call with your customer and yeah. 
you don't mind doing that or just no. give me some but this this little presentation will be very powerful you could share that with her too but just uh -huh. because a lot of it too is i'm wondering if this child is eating good food too so you never know yeah i, I yeah it, because they're such picky eaters at two. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. so difficult to get food into them but here's and the other I, thing too denise i want to say um the brain so this is a powerful statement and um the brain will never, ever let the body starve. Good to know. The, it, it just won't. So at one point in time, there will be a, a breaking of willpower. <laughs> what's good for you and what's what you want to eat. So I, I say to my parents, hey, have you ever heard of meditation apps? <laughs> Come on in your ears, find a safe place and go take care of you. It does it because it depends on how bad you want it. And so you do it with love, right? It's, yeah. I, I love you and I love you so much. You're able to have any of this food right here. Mommy's not restricting you. Like you can have anything you want here. Well, yeah, I don't have chicken nuggets, but you have all this food you can have. It's okay. I love you. Look. So they don't feel like you're, you're not taking, you're not, not providing for them. Right. You're just giving them what you know their body needs and we're taking away what their body wants, but giving them what they need. It's hard. I am. It's hard. It's hard. And so that's, that's really why you have to surround yourself with people that can support you in that. And everybody's got to be on board. It's got to be a family affair, right? It's a sit down. Like this is what we're doing as a family, but gosh, you know what, what if it works? What if our child talks to us for the first time? What if our child does, we get to see them. We get to see them for the first time. It's powerful. And so you're right, Marilyn, like the kids need the right nutrition and they, all of that works together. But when those cells, like that's the next level, right? Those cells are healthy, that nutrition, and they're going to be more open, right? That palate changes. They're going to be more open to the food that you're giving them. And suddenly they're like eating other things because their brain is more in a connective state. And I wonder if they can't take the probiotic, what's wrong with um, having them drink the prebiotic? Because that's a drink. Um. Yeah, sometimes if there's like weeds growing in the microbiome, you want to clean out the weeds before you feed them. Um, so I do like doing probiotic first. Okay. Um, and then using food with good fiber to feed. The, um, and so if they can't take our probiotic, which let me verify with Dr. Bremhaw. I mean, he, he said that to on a three-way to, to actually that, that mom. He said, you can crush it. I was like, what? I never... I didn't, when did that happen? <laughs> you crush, up the, crush up the probiotic and like put it in applesauce. Yeah. Okay. Or I think even inside of a smoothie, which most kids on the spectrum don't drink smoothies. Okay. And, and essentially it would be no different than having a probiotic that was already liquefied or something like that. Um, it just, you would have like all probiotics that are not encoded like ours are, there will be less of an absorption. Yeah but it's better than nothing. Something. Yes, right. it's something. 60% right. is better than <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it is something. And so that's why for years before I found, I was introduced to Life Vantage, I would use like a hundred billion count of probiotics because you knew some of it was going to be lost, right? By the hydrochloric acid. And you just went a high big gun, hoping that you could get like whatever percentage of that you could get. But it still is effective. Um, and so they, they absolutely, these kids need to be on probiotics for sure. Well, thank you. That is excellent information. So we could keep you here all night, but I think we're going to wrap the call and thank you so much You're so welcome. for, yeah, just all this wealth of knowledge. It was, and I, your story was just so touching, um, gave me chills, but that's what we need to remind ourselves is, you know, Facts tell, but stories sell. And if you can help somebody and bless their life in that way, I mean, that is worth more than anything. So um, I just think we need to remind ourselves, you know, how powerful this product is and how we can change lives and yeah. what, a, what a wonderful gift to give others. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for sharing so with us. I appreciate you so much.
And everyone have a great week and we'll see you next Tuesday night, same time. Take care. Bye. Thanks all. Thank you all. Thanks very Thank much. You.